Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our uh, PGI, our preparatory ground instruction for exercise 23, what I call C, diversions. Uh, we split up navigation into three different preparatory ground instructions. So we're going to learn how to do a diversion. So let's say we're flying along and for some reason the weather's bad and we need to divert somewhere. We have to go somewhere else. This is how we're formally going to do it. A diversion may happen for a number of reasons. Uh, typically, it will be because of bad weather, but it could also occur because uh, there's a mechanical issue, passenger sickness, or there's a last minute uh, schedule uh, change. And so in this lesson, what we're going to cover is how to formally uh, do a diversion procedure. So let's say here we are flying along uh, and uh, I have a, a clock here on the top left, and just to kind of give you an idea of time. And as we're flying along, Oh, there happens to be a thunderstorm ahead of us and we're not going to get where we want to go. So we attempt to turn around, but uh oh, there's thunderstorms behind us too. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pick a starting landmark and we're either going to fly around it or outbound on a road or other kind of straight landmark. Then what we're going to do is draw a, a track line. So from where we started, to where we're going. And we're going to estimate the distance, heading, and time. The way we estimate distance is by looking at your lines of latitude. Remember, each line, each minute of latitude is one nautical mile. So we can use a pencil or something like that to, to hold on our map and then, and then figure out how, uh, how many nautical miles that is. And then we can estimate a heading as well. So here we are, here we drew a line on the map and you're just gonna hold that pencil against that line and then hold it against your line of uh, latitude or, or count the number of little ticks each nautical mile and figure out our heading, our uh, distance and our time en route. Then what we're going to do, so remember we said we're circling around a landmark or we're flying outbound on a road. Uh, now what we're going to do is either come back on on a road or something like that back towards our starting landmark okay and when we do that we finish everything else off we're going to set our heading indicator and do an engine check advise air traffic control we might have to revise our flight plan and just before we get to our starting landmark we're going to do a departure angle check so this is really important we talked about this in our last lesson and this is where you're going to figure out whether you made any gross mistakes with you estimating your heading so you're going to pick a landmark on the left, pick a landmark on the right, and then look at your map and make sure that lines up. As long as you're between those two landmarks, you should be okay. At the start time, you're going to, or over your landmark, you're going to start your time and then calculate an estimated time of arrival. So just add on the estimated time on route that you figured out earlier and, uh, and just add that to the current time. So here, what we do, we've flown outbound on this road. So it's kind of 90 degrees to our proposed track. And as we come back, this is when we do uh, what we were just talking about, uh, setting our heading indicator, telling ATC. But we're going to come in behind our landmark, as you can see. We're not going to go straight to the hand landmark. We're going to uh, come in behind it. And then we're going to turn in behind it. So this we do this so we can do our departure angle check. And then when we're over our landmark, we can start our time. At the halfway point, we're going to revise our ETA. So just take your time uh, that you've flown since so your time over and just add that to the current time. And that's going to give you a revised ETA. So here we are. Uh, it is eight minutes. We've flown for eight minutes. So we just add eight minutes to the current time. The current time is 1223. And so a revised ETA 1631. So you're going to do this on your flight test too. Uh, they'll give you a diversion. You're going to give them a time on route at your halfway point. You're going to revise your ETA. And here we are on time at our destination. Often what I do in for this exercise with students, especially commercial students, uh, I get them to fly and then I take their map. Uh, they have to guess their heading and and their time. And then what I do is I take their map away and just make them fly that heading in time. And invariably, they end up at their destination. You, you, you get good enough at this. They end up at their destination um, at the time 
uh, that they said, and they're not even looking at their map. And so this is just an exercise to to get you to practice and and trust your time on route and trust your your heading that you selected. Uh, let's talk about the flight test standards. So there will be on on the flight test, uh, the examiner will give you a scenario. Uh, and, and just say, oh, look, you know, you're low on fuel or, oh, there's bad weather here. Uh, I want you to go somewhere else. And often they'll combine this with another exercise and have you fly to a, a grass strip or something where you can do a precautionary landing. You're not allowed using a GPS or any navigation age, aids. Uh, you can't use rulers. Everything kind of has to be by guessing. But you can kind of cheat um, a little bit by guessing, like the little trick that I gave you with the pencil. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that in the air. So you're expected to identify your position and uh, draw a track line, basically exactly what I explained to you that you have to do. You're also going to be looking, uh, the examiner is going to be expecting that you uh, figure out the highest obstacle along course and, and pick an altitude that is clear of that, of that obstacle. And then you need to maintain your, your, uh, your altitudes and headings to within flight test standards. So I'm going to let you watch a video now of how a diversion looks like in real life and walk you through it here. Anyway, thanks for joining me and uh, we'll see you in our next lesson on instrument flight.